The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode.
Hey there, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today titled Digitizing Airport Operations for Safety and Efficiency. Once again, I'm Nick Frank, producer at Trimble, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. This is our third and final webinar in our series with Microsoft. If you haven't seen the first two, they are on demand, so you can go back and watch all three webinars within the next handful of days. Before I hand it off to the speakers, I do have a few housekeeping items that I need to attend to. Our webinar today should take just about an hour. That includes the Q&A portion at the end. To make sure the flow of the webinar continues along, all attendees will be on mute for the duration of the presentation. Now you can submit questions at any time in the Q&A panel and our presenters will get to as many as possible at the end of the presentation, but you can submit questions at any point during the speaking. The webinar is being recorded. The video along with the slides will be available in the next three to five days. So you will have an opportunity to watch uh, part one, two, and three of the Microsoft series. We do have one poll question coming up during the pr presentation. So please partake when it comes up in just a second and stick around after the conclusion of the presentation for a post webinar survey. We're always looking forward for ways to improve. And as I say, Poll question, let's get that one launched here. Uh, what's the biggest challenge you're facing right now while managing your assets? We're talking about assets today. Um, so do you have a lot of siloed data, disconnection from the office to the field, you have an aging outdated system, or do you have some other issues? And we'll see if you know Ryan can talk about some of those today and, and how um, Wolpert can help address some of those issues. So we'll give everyone about 10, 20 seconds here to participate in the poll. Put your answers in and you know, maybe we can touch on these results in just a little bit. And yeah, results are coming in. Give everyone another about 10 seconds here. Awesome, thanks everybody for participating in that. Well, now let's get to our speakers for today's presentation. Starting with the left to right, Ryan Butler. He is the Technology Services Director at Wolpert and leads teams in designing and implementing best in practice asset management systems for a variety of government entities, including airports. Ryan's experience includes performing all aspects of asset management, software implementation, and related technology services involving airports. He is skilled at identifying and adapting solutions to meet clients' specific needs and goals and has the expertise to solve complex problems and address answer client concerns and questions. Eve McCall is the director of Microsoft's Airport Industry Innovation for the U.S. aligned to the national, state, and local government practice. She's recently elected to the Airports Council International North America Business Information Technology Steering Group and has been an active participant of aviation conferences and the ACI World IT Standing Committee over the last four years, presenting on topics such as sustainability, digital twins, cybersecurity, and hybrid cloud feasibility. She also is the World Business Partner Co-Lead of the ACI North America Data Analytics Working Group, supporting airports on various data AI objectives to improve operational efficiency, maximize revenue per passenger, and most importantly, enhance the traveler experience. And John Green is the Director of Airport Solutions at Trimble's owner and public sector. With more than 20 years of aviation industry experience, John has served in various roles, including Aviation Business Development Manager, Aviation Program Project Manager, and Military Airfield Manager at several locations in the U.S. and internationally while on active duty in the United States Air Force. John is also a certified project management professional and is certified to give this presentation. John? I'll hand it off to you. Great, thank you, Nick, for that introduction. I really appreciate it. First off, I also wanna thank Ryan and Eve for supporting this webinar today, and especially all of you for taking time out of your busy day to hear us speak. As Nick stated, I'm John Green, Director of Airport Solutions for Trimble. Today, I'm gonna to give you a, a brief overview of Trimble and asset lifecycle management, and then hand it over to Ryan from Wolpert for a deep dive into CityWorks Enterprise Asset Management System for Airports. So Trimble is a technology company that has been providing innovative solutions for our customers for almost 50 years. 
We are market leaders in technology solutions for the construction, geospatial, transportation, and agricultural industries. We are a publicly traded, publicly traded company and have over 11,000 teammates worldwide. Our strength is providing solutions for overall asset lifecycle management. And we do that by supporting the complete asset lifecycle from, from design, build, operate, and maintain phases. Our digital project delivery software, eBuilder, supports the design build phase, and our enterprise asset management software, CityWorks, supports the operate maintain phase. The common data environment software, Quadri and Connect, is the hub that connects the two platforms, which is very powerful. Now, I know the airport leaders and their business partners have made do with legacy paper-based processes and antiquated systems pieced together through disjointed workflows using multiple sources of often unreliable data. And it's no wonder that these outdated methods and technologies have dampened pro productivity and driven up costs. And this is why it's so important to digitize your ALM efforts. Next slide, please. Now, why digitize ALM or asset lifecycle management? Well, the, the unified process of managing assets through the full life cycle with our software improves efficiency and productivity while reducing waste and rework, rework at every phase so that projects can finish on time and on budget. In addition, this full life cycle perspective enables a proactive and coordinated approach to asset maintenance with well-timed cost-saving preventative actions that reduce the need for expensive, disruptive major repairs. This approach also contributes to efficient safety and compliance, which is essential for airport operators. And now is the time to implement technology to maintain your aging infrastructure and effectively manage those federal funds coming down to support your projects and assets. Next slide, please. Now, our tech solutions can help your organization become more proactive in overall ALM. I like to mention this reactive example that I had to deal with when I was a military airfield manager at an airfield overseas. I was managing a dual runway airfield, and one of the runways was closed for major repairs for a few months. And one day during a routine check of the, of the sole open runway, we noticed that impression. You can see there on the, on the middle picture of the screen. Um, and that impression is in the asphalt shoulder near the center of the runway. So I had our engineers evaluate the problem and they discovered an underground drainage pipe that had failed and caused erosion under the full width of the runway. So we had to immediately close the runway and get it repaired. That stopped all fixed wing operations at this airfield and let, needless to say, it was a huge problem. Um, and that's why I have no hair today. <laughs> if, if we had a digital system in place to help effectively manage our assets at that airfield, this problem could have been prevented. Our scheduling and routine maintenance efforts would have been digitized and we would have been prompted to have an engineer uh, or somebody in the engineering department to inspect the, the, the drainage pipe for, for damage or needed repairs. Next slide, please. So today we're gonna to focus on the operate and main, maintain phase of ALM with our CityWorks platform for airports. Again, thank you for calling in today. Ryan, over to you to provide that deep dive on CityWorks. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks, Jonathan, just waiting for the screen to grab. Nick, did you share your screen? Or did you give me permissions? Uh, I've got some slides up for you now, if you want to jump in and do your slides oh, or do you want to... Sorry, my bad. Okay. Yeah, my bad. No problem. Okay. <laughs> So technical difficulties. So um, I appreciate everyone attending today. So my name is Ryan Butler. Um, as, as, as was mentioned, I'm the Director of Technology Services at Wolpert. So before we get into a, dia, a demo, I forgot I had a, a slide or two up here to talk about. Um, so as, as Jonathan mentioned, we're going to focus on the, the CityWorks platform, the Trimble CityWorks platform today. Um, and, and that's what I'm going to give you a demo of after this uh, initial, uh, initial slide. Um, so we can go ahead and jump to the next one. Okay. So uses at airports. So some of the things I'm going to be talking about today um, with the CityWorks system, and 
is, you know, there's many uses for this system at airports, right? So uh, number one, operations and maintenance. So of course the, the part 139 side is, is, is very important at airports. Uh, facilities, grounds, fleet maintenance. So that land side maintenance is something else that I'm gonna show you today um, in the system. Uh, ARF, so aircraft rescue and firefighting, also configured in the system. Contract project management, lease space tracking, inventory management, permitting land and licensing, and the, the, the Trimble, all of this being part of the, the Trimble asset platform, um, like eVoter that, that Jonathan mentioned. One of the other things I'm gonna touch on today due to the, uh, due to the nature of the topic here, I'm going to touch on the the SMS component that's configured inside of it can be configured inside of CityWorks as well, so that we can get a glimpse of, a glimpse of what that actually looks like. Okay, so now I think we're good. All right, so the next is is some of the features that we're that we're looking at. So as we go through CityWorks and I give you this demo today, some things to keep in mind. Okay, so some of the features in here. So obviously the safety inspections and work orders, the 139. We talked about the, the fleet, the land side work orders, airport logbook tracking I'm going to show you today as well. So, um, you know, diversions, alerts, one, two, and three, all those things that maybe be tracked, however they're tracked now. We'll see what those can be tracked uh, like in, inside of CityWorks. I mentioned the SMS uh, component to this, okay? API is available. So the bottom line there is CityWorks has the – ability to integrate with other systems whether they're financial systems their hr systems and you know anything that really is allowed and it has an api cityworks can integrate with so we've integrated with a lot of various systems uh, throughout the years reporting and dashboards as well so the data is no good if we can't get it out right so i'm going to show you some examples of reports and, and dashboards that can be run directly inside the system Mobile work management as well. So this is a very mobile friendly system so that work orders are completed in real time out in the airfield, walking through the terminal, wherever you are. Um, Airport GISDM is a platform. So one of the things that makes CityWorks unique is its connectivity to GIS, okay? So CityWorks is a very GIS centric system. So what does that mean? It means that it actually, CityWorks actually reads your GIS data and it does not copy your GIS data into the CMMS system, in this case being CityWorks. And that's something that makes it very unique, right? Because a lot of systems will copy data over. You possibly have to maintain your asset data in two different places, GIS and in your CMMS. And in this case, you don't have to do that. So that's really a differentiator. And then also configurable solutions. So as we go through this today, just keep in mind that what you see is all configurable. This is a, a solution that we configured for a particular airport, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what a solution can look like, um, you know, if you would if you would choose to implement a system like this. Okay, so now I think we're ready for the the demo that we'll go ahead and hop in. So now I will share my screen, and hopefully um, anybody can you see uh, Nick John? Can you see my screen? Okay, excellent. All right, so what you're looking at here is the CityWorks dashboard. So this is what you see when you first log into the uh, log into the environment, okay? So we're looking at an airfield operations dashboard, okay? So you see at the very top, you see your outstanding inspections, all your outstanding work orders that are still open in the system. Underneath it, we see our airfield work orders that are ready for reinspection. Work orders have been closed within the last 30 days and then the logbook entries that I'm gonna show as well. So the idea of this being when you log in and if you're um, you know, an airfield operations or maintenance person, you, know, you can see exactly what you need to see as soon as you log in, okay? And like I mentioned earlier, this is all configurable. So this, hopefully this gives you an idea of some of, the, some of the items you can see so you don't have to start digging for them. And the nice thing about this configurable solution is you'll be able to configure it once we um, once we configure it and, and, and turn it over to you, you'll be able to make changes yourself. You will not have to rely on anyone to make changes for you, which is great. You know, you, you know, it's your system. Um, you know, we should train you to be self-sufficient so that you don't have to keep coming back to a, a software vendor to, to make changes, which is what we don't want. Okay. So this is the main dashboard. You can navigate to other dashboards. So like there's an operations and maintenance facilities dashboard I have configured. 
um, which will just show you know the work orders that have been initiated in the last in the last period of time, um, completed, those open by month. So you can see your trends and your patterns. You know who completes them by employee. All of these being uh, interactive, so I can pick on that piece of the pie chart and show all those ones that I've I've clicked on in that piece of the pie chart and open them up if I wanted to. Below that, we see all the the work order costs. Okay. Preventive maintenance versus reactive maintenance that John alluded to um, during his during his slides. So we can set up any kind of dashboards that you'd want to see, and it's very easy just to navigate from one dashboard to another. Okay. Down the left hand side, we see our main application. So this is the dashboard. Uh, we have details in here, which I'm going to show you, so we can view details on particular assets. Recents will allow us to show the last 10 things. So as we go through this, you'll see that the, the, the user friendliness and the ease of use is very high with the system, which is one of the things we really like, okay? You have the ability to go in and create inspections and logbooks and work orders um, just by clicking a button. Below that, you have different plugins. So CityWorks has lots of plugins. We're, trying, we're not gonna get into today for time purposes, but things like storeroom and inventory, and an asset management component and projects and contracts, all those things I mentioned in the slides prior to the demo, there's plugins over here for those, okay? So we can just quickly navigate to them, okay? Also our reporting is out here, you know, any link to a, a particular website. So if we needed to go to the Nota Manager, you know, we can just go click on it from, a, from the link over here. So it's, it's all really easy to get to, okay? Uh, as I mentioned in the slides, one of the things that makes CityWorks unique is being that GIS-centric system, okay? So if I open up the map, you're able to see GIS data directly in your interface, okay? Which is great because what, what does that allow us to do? Well, first of all, like I said, it's only, your asset data is only maintained in one place being GIS, okay? But we're also able to interact with our assets on the map here, okay? So as an example, I could go in and click Terminal 1. You see how it highlights in there? Go over to my Asset Details over here on the left-hand side. Click it, and I can view all my details on that particular asset. So this case, it's very broad-based. It's Terminal 1. But you'll see all the different attributes from GIS on the left-hand side. Down below, you'll see the total cost of work orders that have been applied to that asset, the total hours that have been applied to that asset. And then also up here in the summary, we can see all the work that's ever been tied to that. So as you get into the lights and pavement, you know, and, and, and boilers and chillers and fleet, you know, before you start working on it, you can get a glimpse of what's been done in the past, okay? And also how much money to date has been spent on those activities, okay? And then, so if you do want to create a work order, okay, you have the ability to, to click the create work order button, Okay, and we have different work order templates loaded. So things like preventive maintenance, we have repair and replace on the reactive maintenance side. Okay, so if we would select this building repair, okay, you could put in locations if you wanted to. So like terminal one, you could put in. Okay, you'll see most things are pick lists, right? You see how all these things are pick lists because we really don't want to type, right? Nobody really likes typing. It's very difficult to report on typing and comments, okay? So we really want to avoid that as much as we can. So when we click this create one work order, okay? And it creates the work order in the system. One of the other things while it's creating, I'll, I'll mention, is all of these values can be defaulted as well. So if you have types of work that always get defeated or uh, defaulted to work groups, you can do that, okay? If you have one type of work order that always gets sent to one person, we can do that as well, right? So there's lots of flexibility um, in configuring this environment, okay? So you'll see the, the map move there. See how they put a pin on the map? Turn that off so you can see it a little bit better. So everything is map and, and geospatial based inside the CityWorks system, okay? And then this is what this example work order looks like. So I'm not gonna go through all the fields. Bottom line is if you don't need them, we will hide them for you. So you don't have to look at them, okay? But fields in here like, actual finish okay um, you can fill out um, 
So uh, other th fields like comments, right? So you can put in your comments if you would like to. This is the only place where it's free form text, okay? Up here in details, you can put with contractors do the work. You can associate things to projects, right? So like if you uh, maybe have a FEMA event that you need to prep for, you can associate to a project and run FEMA reporting afterwards to get uh, easier submittal to FEMA. Whether things are tenant billable or are, 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 are documented, okay? And then also uh, we can add costs, of course, right? So if we click on the add cost button, there's crews located over here, okay? Or if I pick a crew, once again, no typing, I can just put in, you know, four hours of time for Rob in this case, go down to my equipment and say, well, I use this, this vehicle for four hours and click add. So really easy to add in those costs. And at the beginning, we saw the costs in Terminal 1, that's where they came from, right? They came from adding costs to work orders, okay? Over in the custom fields, part of what we what we implement as part of um, any asset management uh, system is something called failure codes, right? So instead of going down here and typing what our problem actually is, we're able to go in here and say, well, maybe the fault was with a door caused by, you know, an accident. So we had to go in there and replace it, right? And it's just part of asset management best practices that we deploy, okay? So that way we're able to run failure reporting, see why our assets are failing without having to manually type down there in the comments. So that's a big field that we uh, that we pay a lot of attention to in a configuration, okay? When the work order is done in the upper right up here, okay, there's a close button, the X. So I can just click close, it says the work order is closed and now it's been filled out in the system, right? So very user-friendly system. Lots of drop downs, lots of field hiding to make it uh, to make it easier. Okay, so there's also um, there's also an inspection side of things that I wanted to show you as well. And tying it into our safety aspect today, um, I'm going to go in and open up the the safety management system dashboard that we have configured, and I'm going to talk about this. But for right now, I'm going to go down to the bottom because I want to show um, a couple different inspection examples. Okay. One being training records. So this particular airport wanted to uh, keep track of their training records. So you'll see they have different sections in here like FAA Part 139 Ops Required Training, Safety and Excursion Training, Familiarization Training. So as we open these up, what you can see is as they complete the training for a particular employee, and this, this uh, inspection is for one employee, they check the box and put the date on it, and then they can run reporting from this to show the uh, FAA that the required training has been completed, right? So this is an example of how we can utilize an inspection form inside of CityWorks, okay? So that's one example. Um, another inspection example I wanted to go through is on an, an SMS perspective is an airport risk assessment worksheet, okay? So if I open up one of these, okay, this is a uh, it has to do with the SMS and identifying potential hazards before something happens, right? So as we, as I collapse this and look at this, so the information section that has a date in it, for example, the potential hazard, right? So reduced experience and confusion and ramp operations. So that's a potential hazard that we identified before an incident took place, okay? Then we have documented in here the possible consequences, right? So possible consequences, an aircraft to aircraft collision, right? And then the probability of it, you'll see I have in there is remote, possibly, um, you know, uh, less than five times a year, okay? Or you can change it to improbable, almost impossible, possibly once every 10 years. These are all the definitions um, from, from the safety management, okay? So the severity of it, whether it's major, catastrophic, hazardous, same thing. So it's all about documenting those possible consequences inside CityWorks, okay? Also on the mitigation measures, you know, what are we doing to fix the problem? What are we doing to mitigate the chances of that happening, okay? So once again, it's documented in here. So if something would happen, you know, and you identified this as a risk, you come back and say, well, this is, we identified this as a risk. And then what do we do to actually potentially uh, try to uh, uh, mitigate this from happening, right? And it's documented inside of CityWorks, okay? 
So that's just uh, an example of, of an inspection I wanted to show in here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. I made changes, so it's saying to save it. Okay, and then on the on the logbook side of things, I wanted to show an example also related to SMS, right? So imagine, you know, um, a constituent, a citizen, an internal employee, a tenant walking through the airport and finding um, and finding a potential safety hazard. Okay, so what we have um, what we have built in here, okay, is we can uh, configure it all using Esri technology, uh, Survey One Two Three, a safety incident reporting portal that's external to CityWorks and it's anonymous, right? so that someone can anonymously submit a safety concern, okay? Once again, all these fields are configurable, okay? And once it gets submitted, it'll come in here as an open incident for the airport to address, okay? So for example, if I open up one of these uh, closed incidents, and you'll see some details over here, but if I open up one of these uh, closed incidents, okay? So this was a, a safety incident that was reported on, on February 8th, okay, that was submitted to a certain person, okay? Down below in the comments, it says there's a slip hazard inside the terminal at the American Airlines check-in area. Someone spilled something, check-in area for the main terminal. And then all of these fields are completely configurable. So in this case, the logbook custom fields, you know, what was the result, the location, the people involved, you know, contributing factors, injuries, day for away from works, costs, responsible party, all of those things are documented, right? So it can be as little or as, as, as more than you, than you would need, okay? But then that way, once again, we have what did we do to fix, fix this problem, okay? And you'll be able to see it. And there's also a picture here as well that can be opened up, all right? So that's an example of one logbook I did want to show. Um, an example of one other logbook in the operations and maintenance dashboard as we've seen these become very helpful. So this is an example of an aircraft alert, okay? So this is an aircraft alert, uh, happens to be alert one that came in. So down in the comments, it has an aircraft approaching the airport as reporters are suspect to be encountering difficulties. And if I open this up, okay, I can open up as it's already attached the airport emergency response guide so someone can follow this, okay? And I have specific aircraft event fields over here. So alert one, um, you know, notification date, the return to normal operation date, the tail number, Boeing 737, destination, ground equipment used, passenger loading through a jet bridge. So all those details that can be captured in a digital logbook as well as a picture if I wanted to, right? This is a picture of it actually at the gate, okay? So those are examples of, of logbooks and what they can look like inside of CityWorks, okay? So kind of the last component I wanted to touch on here uh, before we go back to the slides is the, the reporting and dashboard side of things, okay? So anything that get puts into the system can then get reported on. So I wanted to show a few examples of that, okay? So this is an example of one dashboard that's reporting out of the out of CityWorks, okay? So it shows you all the operations and maintenance airfield work orders that are open and the ones that are closed, total wildlife sightings, cost information, those that are completed. So if you have like a break room or an ops room and you have a, a big screen in there, this is something that continue, could continuously update so you know what's going on on the airfield, okay? All of these maps over here, you can change the different layers. So if we wanted to open up a, a legend, so you can see all the red icons are the open 139 work orders that I can click on um, and open up the details, okay? You'll see the trends and the patterns in here as well. And you can turn things on and off. So if I wanted to turn off wildlife, turn on wildlife sightings and turn off something else, you see how I can turn things on and off on the map here. Okay. But all interactive. Just give you an idea without logging into your CMMS, you know, what's going on from a high level. Okay. This is another example. So this is an airport. Uh, prior to using CityWorks about six or seven years ago, we implemented for them, they used Excel and pivot sheets. Okay. And now they're moving more towards, this happens to be an Esri dashboard. We also have many of our clients moving more towards Power BI, Microsoft Power BI, and other reporting um, 
other reporting mechanisms like that, right? We want to get them out of the out of the pivot tables in Excel. We want to get them out of paper, and we want to move them to more interactive reporting uh, through dashboards, through Esri or Microsoft Power BI, et cetera. So um, in here, just like pointing out a couple, we can see all the, the PMs that are projected versus completed, right? So you'll see over here on the right, you know, 63% of the vehicle and equipment PMs have been completed, right? Whereas 85% of the facilities PMs have been completed, okay? So it just gives you nice statistics and metrics that can be run directly from the system, okay? And all of these can be opened up so you can see among the PMs we've had to cancel, why are we canceling them, right? Well, most of the time it's because of lack of people, right? And that's valuable information you can take back to management or whomever for justification on, hey, this is why we need to we need to hire some more people, right? We, we, we need to complete these PMs because that preventive maintenance is going to be a heck of a lot cheaper in catching that problem before it actually breaks, okay? And then the last dashboard I'll show before we'll go ahead and go back to the PowerPoint, um, with our theme of the day of, of safety, this is a safety management system dashboard that's pulling out of data from CityWorks. So in this period of time, you know, how many incidents did we re get reported and what were the result of those incidents? Okay, um, how many were preventable, responsibility to airlines, responsibility of third parties, total vehicle costs, FOD reported, you know, where were these safety incidents? Okay, and then also the severity of our potential safety incidents. Okay, so jumping back to, to CityWorks very briefly and looking at that safety management system dashboard, remember we looked at those hazard analysis worksheets, okay? So one of the things that we can do with those hazard analysis worksheets is, you know, depending on what you answer for severity, okay, and the uh, likelihood of it, okay, we can automatically calculate a score. So if we have something that's very probable and it's catastrophic, right, then that's going to populate in our dashboard here um, as a high risk, okay? Whereas if something is not very probable, Okay, and it's a minimal impact, then it's going to be down here in green. So CityWorks calculated the average severity in here of 63.3 for all of our risks, which is right in the middle of the medium risk zone. So just something that we can do um, out of the out of the CityWorks environment. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and change it back to um, change it back to Trimble, and I'll wrap up with a, a few slides here. Okay, so um, wrapping and putting a bow on this. So you've seen a lot of functionality in there, very user friendly. So what we offer is, you know, what we, we work with airports on is kind of a couple different solutions, right? We can come in and configure everything for them, right? Uh, basically from the ground up, right? With a, with a, fresh, uh, a fresh configuration. One of the other things that we're able to do, so uh, on the Wolpert side, we have something called Rapid Ready. So what does it does? It leverages that CityWorks uh, proven features and, and technology, right? And then our airport experience, right? So that you get an environment that is pre-configured for part 139s, work orders, uh, landside maintenance, and, and a lot of other things. So what does this allow you to do? It allows you to be much quicker in an implementation, right? We can get it done in weeks, okay? Um, immediate insights, right? So this has already been deployed many places. So um, it's that proven configuration, including part 139. And obviously if it's, you know, if it takes weeks, it's a much lower cost than a full, a full customization of a, of a software, right? Minimal training. And, and the reason why I say that is, is because we have training manuals and things already developed. So it's, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? We can just provide you training, make sure, you know, it rolls out successfully and then just be there if you need help, okay? And I've already touched on the, the GIS utilization as it uses your airport's GIS data um, if you have it developed. If you don't have it developed, it can be collected um, as well. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so like I said, quick to value, pre-configured uh, schema, pre-configured software, pre-drafted SOPs and manuals, and I'm not going to read through all the features on the right, but those are all the things that are included in that in that rapid ready, right? So anything from land side to facilities, um, ARF inspections, training records, SMS, 
uh, mobility dashboards, logbook entries. There's quite a bit that we can configure for an airport in a matter of weeks that allows them to see their GIS data and start creating work orders for them. So it's it's a really it's a really cool thing to see. Okay. So I believe that was my last slide, and I'll pass it over to Eve. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Ryan. Appreciate that. So um, you might be wondering, what is Microsoft doing on an airport webinar, particularly one around, um, you know, airport operations for safety and security? Um, and the reason that we're here is Microsoft is a proud partner of both Trimble and Wolpert. And the technology that um, that this is built on is Microsoft Technologies. So when we think of safety and security, it's not only around the airport operations from the data perspective as what you just saw about building a safety management system or an asset management system, you know, using Part 139 inspections and asset management across the life cycle, but also the important consideration is around the actual security of the data itself. So if you could switch to the next slide for me, please, that'd be great. Thank you. So and from Microsoft's perspective, you know, we recognize that there are a number of different um, um, scenarios or, or angles where uh, data security can be uh, put at risk, right? So Microsoft has these six different pillars that we recognize as topics for um, areas where airports can be exposed. And this is critical um, infrastructure data um, when you think of managing your assets, how do you make sure that you protect that data against bad actors? So, you know, I'm not going to spend too, too much talking, time talking about all these six scenarios. They're not exclusive to airport use cases, but I think it's important for um, all of us as an audience to take into consideration. So the first is identity and access management. This is something that I think we all recognize today with phishing um, campaigns that come to our emails. You know, we need to make sure that our custom that our data is protected based on the roles that we have. So Microsoft implements what's called role-based access control. So we want to make sure that when you authenticate with the Trimble CityWorks solution, that the data that you have accessible to you in that system is based on the role that you have, uh, be it an owner or um, you know an operator or a uh, supervisory level uh, maintenance worker, uh, you know, a maintenance supervisor or an actual maintenance worker that has to have the details of the those work orders. So we consider the access to the data set based on your identity and your role. The next piece is around threat protection. We want to make sure that when this data is integrated, um, that we're not having nefarious data that's somehow worming its way into the system. So, you know, there was the conversation made about APIs, um, and so we can help make sure that the data is secure wherever it's living, um, be it transferred from, you know, your on-premises data sources or as it lives in the cloud with the Trimble solution based on uh, Microsoft's Azure. Broadly speaking, cloud security is something that we recognize is critically important. Uh, we do um, believe that you know there's a hybrid cloud scenario for all airports. You're not going to have everything all in the cloud or all in one cloud. You have numerous systems that reside in numerous places, and Microsoft has a point of view and a perspective on how we can help you secure your data, both on premises and in the cloud. Uh, when you think about information protection and governance. Uh, this is an area where we want to make sure that data that doesn't uh, need to be exposed to um, other users can be redacted or, um, or sensitized or flagged as sensitive data. So that's, again, another component that Microsoft brings to the program. Uh, from a risk management perspective, you know, I heard risk management mentioned in the solution when we're talking about airport risk management, but there's a data risk management component as well where we want to, again, make sure that we help to flag data that could be critical that needs to be um, treated differently. And then finally, from a compliance management perspective, when you think about FOIA requests or other, you know, compliance management, Microsoft can again bring the ability to ensure that the data that um, should not be accessible to external parties remains secure from a compliance perspective. So um, some of the things I wanted to highly uh, quickly highlight as well, um, you know. 
Ryan mentioned that the CityWorks platform is rich with accessibility with APIs uh, to other data sources, including um, GIS. So, you know, the comment that was made around making sure that the data is not actually copied into the system, um, but that it is read into the system is an example of a way that we can help make sure that the data is secure and that there's not multiple copies of data um, floating around your environment that might have conflicting information. Uh, that's something that we see very frequently, especially when you think about asset management across the life cycle um, and leveraging um, dashboards and components around things like labor rates, you know, your actual costs, the mode of failure, all those sorts of things. That data may be housed in numerous systems and Microsoft can help to rationalize that to make sure that your asset management system has a single source of truth, that the data is not um, inconsistent based on its source. And then finally, um, I did want to comment that you know many of these systems being able to digitize and automate these processes. You know today most of these processes in many airports is a manual process uh, that you need to be you know having in different Excel spreadsheets or on different pieces of paper management by walking around and getting signatures. It's in some ways not a far reach from that. It might be an email chain uh, instead and being able to leverage this technology to facilitate the automation um, of, of these different processes and having a digitized component will enable that future ready state for airports, especially as there is so much um, you know, uh, construction and um, improvement programming going on using the federal funding through the IHAA programs. So we wanna make sure that you use that to best effect and that you can uh, remain um, up to date with the data that you're leveraging to manage your airport operations. So with that, um, I thank you for the interest in how Microsoft can help with the, uh, with the overarching program of digitizing the airport operations for safety and security. So again, appreciate your time this afternoon, and especially as we're heading to uh, a long summer, hopefully for many of us, uh, summer, holiday season. That's great. Ryan, Eve, thank you so much. Great, great presentations. Um, I, I forgot to mention during my, my uh, presentation that CityWorks is in place at over 800 organizations across the country. And there's, there's over 50,000 end users and they're helping man, we're helping manage over $80 billion in assets across the country. Out of those 800 plus organizations that have adopted CityWorks, 400 of them have been have been implemented by Woolpert. Fun fact, I think that's important to note. Um, so the credibility is there. We're, we're proven that we can be successful in, in, in all industries, not just aviation. Um, but I just wanted to mention that. And thank you very much, Eve and Ryan, for, for those presentations. I think we'll open up for questions, right, Nick? Yeah, we got about 15 minutes here for questions. I do want to share, and, and I don't know if you guys want to comment on, so here's the poll that we had earlier. Uh, which is some of the things of, of, you know, the challenges that the people that are on our call are, are currently facing right now. And it seems like aging and outdated system is, seems to be about 38% is one of the biggest challenges in siloed data, you know, um, that disconnect from the office to feel a little bit lower. And obviously other could, could end up being a lot of things, but, um, you know, any one of you can jump in and, and see, you know, like, you know, if that's the challenge, the aging and outdated system, I guess maybe that's why they're here. Right, yeah, so I can comment on a couple of those. So hopefully, I, I kind of touched on all of these, hopefully in my demo, you know, as far as the silo data goes, you know, having uh, your GIS data, in, in, in my example, that's disconnected, you know, from your CMMS system and having asset data there, right, that possibly don't match is a problem that we've seen a lot, right? The disconnect from office to field, um, you know, by having a, a solution like this, it's very mobile friendly, right? What you're viewing in the office should be what you're seeing out in the field. And aging an outdated system for sure, right? So there's lots of systems out there that, you know, are maybe not just aging and outdated, but also are not delivering what you need, right? Or maybe you're running multiple systems to accomplish, you know, something that could be done in one system, right? As far as, you know, cost savings. So, um, you know, hopefully, um, you know, those three things uh, you got a, got a glimpse at of, you know, what a system can look like in, in terms of Trimble and CityWorks. 
And you know, Ryan, when I when I put together that poll, it was based on a lot of what I thought you would cover in your demo. So I was like, okay, yes. let, let's get some things that I figured that, hey, here are the challenges. Hey, Ryan's probably going to cover a lot of these yes. down in, in his presentation. Yes, and I probably covered the others as well if I would have known what those are, but yes. <laughs> I would even add that, you know, again, these are problems that are ubiquitous, not only in airports, but organizationally, you know, globally. We see this all the time. Um, I noticed that you uh, constrained the answers to only one, so I suspect maybe some of the audience had a difficult time deciding which was the singular answer they wanted to vote on, because yes. siloed data is a huge problem. I mean, there, the problem is not a shortage of data. It's how to create insights from the noise, like we're drowning in the volumes of data. It's how do we use it uh, to get those insights, right? And frequently there may be aging or outdated systems that don't provide the data that we actually need, right? So, um, and in this world and age of the internet of things and different sensors, you know, there's even more data that's coming available that can be ingested. And, uh, you know, you mentioned GIS, obviously, a mapping layer is of critical importance in airports. And there's lots of data that can flow through that um, or even come from other systems. So asset management is a huge category, which includes, you know, land side, air side, airfield assets, um, you know, actual, you know, assets like runways, but assets like elevators, right? So there's lots of opportunity here um, to bring a solution like CityWorks and partners like Wolpert uh, to to help optimize and uh, you know improve airport operations as we continue to modernize. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining in, uh, everyone. So I do we do got a couple questions, uh, and I, I'll just open these up. I'll throw them out there, and whoever wants to jump in and answer them. Uh, so the first one we have is: Does mobile work offline and save the data? Yes, so I, I can answer that one. So the short answer is yes, it does work offline. It'll work in a disconnected and a connected mode. Um, as far as it's saving data, so what happens is on the city work side um, is you can uh, complete your, your activities without any kind of cellular or network connection. And then when you get a cellular connection, it syncs back up to that connection, right? So yes is a short answer. And um, you know, we've encountered that not just at airports, but, you know, there's dead spots, I think, in every city <laughs> anymore, you know, with cellular coverage. And when you start to go below ground as well, one or two stories, there's that's definitely been a problem as well. So uh, we've had much success, you know, organizations working in a disconnected mode. Yeah, I could chime in on that, too. I, I think that question is derived from the 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 folks that are going out and doing those inspections on the airfield that may not have the connectivity. Um, and so that's one of those strengths, I think, is, is really being able to, to uh, submit a discrepancy without connectivity. And once you sync back up to connection, it, it syncs up with the system. So you're not losing that data. I think that's a very, very critical component with how CityWorks is powerful. Well, and yeah, and just to add on to that. So an example there is if you're not connected and you create a discrepancy out on the airfield, for an example, it has an initiated date and time on that, right? So when you sync it up, it's actually syncing up when that was actually created, right? Because it's stored locally on your mobile device before you sync it up, right? Which is nice. And you can see all that GIS data that you saw on the map there, you can see that in a disconnected mode as well, which is pretty powerful. Uh, as a current CityWorks user, can you talk a little bit more about the capability uh, for 139 inspections and discrepancy? How exactly does that work? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, yeah, so I mean, it, it kind of depends on, you know, um, how how an organization or, or, or a business partner implements it. So from, from our approach, we use, speaking of that disconnected mobile technology, uh, we use that uh, mobile technology. So um, as an example, we have uh, several different airports using that, that CityWorks mobile option, driving around the airfield and watching the map and the GIS data move as they drive around an airfield, uh, creating work orders out on the airfield or discrepancies out on the airfield, them automatically be notified to, you know, electrical or airfield maintenance, wherever it needs to go to, them going out, fixing the problem on mobile, completing the work order on mobile and getting reinspected and closed by operations. So 
and then the report being run, which is one thing I didn't show, the report being run um, from from um, from CityWorks, right? So, you know, by uh, carefully planning uh, your workflow, and everything really starts out with a workflow. That's how we start out: is we design a workflow and make sure it works. Now, with our Rapid Ready solution, we know what works, so that's what we just deploy, right? But that's kind of the the workflow that we envision and, and we deploy as as a part of these airports and it's really seamless i mean it's connected it's seamless it's easy to use notifications are set up so it's it's been really successful for us we have a few more minutes if anyone has any other questions uh how does microsoft fit into the equation with with trimble and the cityworks platform or like how does the softwares work together so uh, the Trimble CityWorks platform um, has the option of being deployed through the Microsoft Azure Cloud. So uh, Trimble is a Microsoft uh, partner. So their, so their software solutions are offered as software as a service um, on the Microsoft Azure Cloud. They're also available um, through the Azure Marketplace. So if you are a current Microsoft customer and you uh, want to explore the solutions through the Azure Marketplace, that's also a way that you can um, leverage or, or access the, so the software from a procurement perspective. So um, as a result of that, um, there are Azure features that are available through the, that deployment from a security perspective that we're leveraging Azure's cloud security platform you know, when it's when the solution is hosted on Azure from a software as a service perspective. Hopefully that was clear. Yeah, and from a from a Wolper perspective, I mean, aside from us being, um, you know, Microsoft business partner, and I think using just about every software that Microsoft has anymore, right, including Azure, right? Um, you know, we have a lot of our clients that, that use it as well. And, you know, I gave the example in the presentation of Microsoft Power BI, right? So, you know, we have a lot of clients moving towards that direction and getting away from the paper reports being run from a, a system like CityWorks and moving more towards that Power BI, that digital live dashboarding capabilities. So that's how, you know, an example, one way that we're they're working, we're working with it now with, with several of our clients. One last comment I'll add to that is when you have other data sources that are going to be ingested through CityWorks that are also in Azure, you know, it inherits some of the data security features that I was describing earlier. Awesome. Uh, so we, we're just going to wrap up here because we only have a few more minutes. Any final thoughts uh, from anyone uh, on, on the panel from today? No, I, I, from my side, I would just appreciate it. I know everyone's busy, so hopefully it was as helpful in seeing it. Um, and it was informative. Um, you know, my email's down there in the bottom. It's, it's the one at the bottom at Wolpert, so... You know, if you have any other further questions about anything I showed or, or we can be of any help, you know, feel free to uh, feel free to reach out to me. But other than that, just appreciate everyone attending and, and listening in. My comment will be, you know, as you mentioned with my introduction, Microsoft has made an investment in supporting the airport industry. I'm very proud to uh, substantiate that partnership or that that commitment through partnerships with Wolpert and with Trimble, who bring that aviation and technology expertise specific to the industry to empower our uh, airport organizations to achieve more. So I'm proud and grateful to be among this esteemed panel. Yeah, I echo those comments. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for Eve, Ryan. It was great presentations. And again, we want to thank all of you for calling in today. This webinar will be, it is recorded. So if you have teammates at your organizations that are interested, uh, reach out to one of us on the, you know, the email contact at the link below, or uh, yeah, just uh, look look for us out on on LinkedIn as well because we're going to be sending out reminders of of this is available, you know, this recording is available. Um, thank yeah. you very much, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. John grabbed my script to close out the presentation, so <laughs> thanks, John. Um, but yes, uh, part one, two, and three will all be on uh, our, our website if you, if you missed the first two webinars with Microsoft. Uh, we have another webinar that we did with Ryan a couple months ago as well that's also on the website. So anything with Airport, we've got online. Uh, but again, thanks everybody for joining, and uh, we'll see you for our next webinar in the coming months. Thank, Thank you. you.